Today I'm going to take a rookie and put it up against a total veteran. We're going to test out the new throne powder. Joe Williams isn't really the kind of guy who puts a product out unless it's like 100% perfect. So let's take the new throne powder and put it against the thing that we've been using for the last 50 years. Rit dye. Really trust our results, we gotta make sure everything is held constant. So the first thing I did was take out the variable of the plastic. Different head manufacturers use different plastic, which takes dye differently, so I cut a head in half. Also, it was like super fun and the best part of my week to just start cutting the crossheads in half. We also followed the instructions on each of the packets. Uh, you can find that on throne.com's Instagram. They did a really cool info tutorial. And that's gonna be the only variance, is what do they tell you to do on the packet? It's gotta be fair that you're at least applying the dye the way they tell you to apply it. Otherwise, everything's consistent and we're gonna give each of them a 15 minute soak. The red on the red went a little bit darker than a true scarlet. Now this is my first time using Ruby, so I'm assuming that's what Ruby's supposed to look like from Throne. But either way, if you're dying appropriately, you should be staying in front of it and checking it to pull it when it's the color that you want anyhow. So no big revelation there. When you're working on a dye and you're putting all this time into it, you want it to last. The key to having your dye last is permeation or saturation. There's a lot of words for it. How deep does the dye go into the head? To check this out, I got to cut the head again. These measurements are small, itty bitty. Super tiny. So small, in fact, I had to go grab my micrometer. The thrown powder permeated into the head two one thousandths of an inch deep. When you're taking units of measurement, it's always important to keep things relative. So let's look at what the RIT did. The RIT dye does not measure on a micrometer. That means that the dye that we've been using for like the last 50 years doesn't permeate the head at all. That means it's basically just staining the outside gloss layer of your lacrosse head. A two thousandth of an inch ain't looking too bad now, is it, huh? Now I'm gonna go ahead and say RIT is a fantastic company. They're a fantastic company to work for, their customer service is fantastic, and they've been the staple we've used for the last 50 years, so I'm certainly not gonna start hating on them. I might not even stop using them. But what I am saying is, if you're gonna go ahead and put a lot of time into a dye job, something you really care about, pay the extra $2 and get the throne dye, it's a no-brainer. I spent $2 on a taco this morning and it wasn't even that good. Well, it's about the end of the show and that means I gotta give you some free stuff, I suppose. So, why not some throne powder? I wanna know what experiments you guys would've done differently and I wanna know in the comments section below. I'm Justin Skaggs from WithLacrosseSticks.com and you're watching Lacrosse All-Stars. Take care, keep laxing. Cross All Stars just sent me this box, and this is going to be next week's show. Coming out next week, I'll try out the new fire threads.